Hello and welcome to the seven day social selling challenge. I'm your host, Erin Fugate, and I will share a little bit more of my story in a moment. But for now, if you don't know me, I'm a blue diamond with doTERRA. I've been working in this field for about 14 years, and I am completely obsessed with MetaPower these days because I've had some really good results and I'm having so much fun sharing it on social media. And I wanted to just come in and pass some of the information that I've been learning and the tools that I've been using, the strategy that I've been using to enroll people with the MetaPower Kit. I've had seven enrollments in October, all with MetaPower Kits. And that is a lot. That's really high enrollments for me. So before we jump into the content, I would just like to hear in the chat a couple of brief intentions. What are you hoping to get from this challenge? Put it in the chat. What do you love about MetaPower? Put it in the chat. Let's do a little connecting before we jump into the presentation. Hi, Christian. Hi, Virginia. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Andrea. I know some of you are probably cooking dinner and listening, and that is all, all good. And I just wanted to remind everyone, hey, everyone, it's Ariana. Um, sorry to interrupt you, Erin. If you are typing in the chat, you need to change your settings to everyone or it will only... Uh, the settings will send you to only a small group of people like the admin. Okay, Kirsten, everything. She wants to get enrollments. Who else wants to get enrollments? Give us some hearts or thumbs ups or whoop mm -hmm. whoop. <laughs> Taya has a event on Saturday. She wants to talk about MetaPower and get some connections. Ooh, good, good idea. Kimberly's loving MetaPower, hoping to get some great ideas to share iPhone 10. Tell us what your name is, iPhone 10. They want enrollments. Ariana, enrollments, right? It feels so good oh, to yeah. have people enrolling because it means that they see the vision that you see and you get to help people. Claudine, more confidence and organization with social selling, more enrollments too. Christian, learn how to get enrollments through social media. Okay, perfect. That's what we're here to talk about. We are here more than just talking about it. We are here to enact some habits on social media so that we can have that result. So we're gonna dive in. If you have any questions that come up through the presentation, please put them in the chat. I am pretty good about reading chats and, and checking in with all of that. And I certainly do hope that at the end, we'll have time for some more Q and A. But I do wanna give you the whole overarching picture of what we're doing in the challenge and what I've been doing on social media to uh, have these, these enrollments. So let's do it. Patricia, if you have no sound, you might wanna just try turning up your system because I think everybody else can hear pretty good. Bear with me while I get my presentation open. Thank you. Okay, so you are in the Visionary Leaders Social Selling Challenge. If anybody is being like, what's social selling? Um, social selling is not only for social media, we're gonna focus on the social media aspect. We're actually gonna focus on Facebook for this particular training. But what social selling is, is it's when brands really engage with their customers in a relationship type dynamic. And with network marketing or direct sales, it's exactly what we're doing. Instead of doTERRA, the brand, going out and trying to sell brand to customer or business to customer, what they're doing is they're selling customer to customer. So they have us, we are 
happy, loyal customers, and they reward us and compensate us when we sell their products to other people. So that is social selling. Now we're going to take social selling to social media and it just expands it and makes it even better and more exciting. So this is me and my cute family, my husband, Gabe, and my kids, Olivia and Emma. If you follow me on social media, you probably know about them a bit. And I really just wanted to start here because I started in network marketing 14 years ago. And the model at that time and still what is taught is this idea of home parties. Some people call them mixers. We call them classes. And you get people to come to your class. And then you ask those people who have come to your class to host a class. And that's how you build your network marketing business. I, from very early on in my doTERRA career, saw the value of social media because I could meet people out and about in my regular days. And then if they, if I followed them on social media, it was a great way for me to stay connected with them, nourish the relationship, and then they could see my content and be exposed to my product and my story even after they've come to a class or we've had a one-to-one. -one. That has worked really great for me for 14 years. But then I had two kids and the pandemic happened and right, everything changed. Not only did the pandemic really change the way that I did my business, but having two kids majorly changes it. Are there any other parents on the Zoom? Please put it in the chat. If you are a parent and you know what I'm talking about when it's like, there is not time for me to go teach a class. If I have a class, I first of all have to either get my husband on board with the kids or I have to hire a babysitter. So that's going to be 50 or $60 for a babysitter. And then in the post pandemic world, it never fails that somebody gets sick, right? I have something scheduled and somebody gets sick and I have to cancel it. So if I'm being super honest with myself and all of you, the old way of teaching classes is not working for me anymore. I am at home being the butler to these two cute kids. I'm cleaning up messes, I'm making snacks, and I need a way to build my business in the in-between moments. So once I started sharing MetaPower on social media last month, I was like, oh, this is brilliant because I can just peek at my phone in between kid duties and check in with comments, check in with customers and enrollments have just been coming in. I'm going to show you some screenshots from my conversations with customers and it's so, so easy. It's amazing. It's mind blowing. But the real reason that I even build a network marketing business in the first point is these guys. I want to have the time to be with them. I want to pick them up from school. I want to cancel all plans if somebody's sick. I want to go on cool trips. So that's why it is so important to me. Before we even go forward, I want you to know that you can sign up for daily text alerts for this challenge. You just text VLBiz, all one word, to 833-359-0069. You will get a text message every morning at 8 a.m. Pacific time with just a little prompt of the focus for the day and a link to the Facebook group. So you can go straight to the Facebook group. You do not have to wade through your um, feed. You don't have to get lost looking at little kitty pictures or whatever's going on in Facebook. Just come straight to the group, see the daily prompt and the daily video. I'll give you all a moment to grab that. Okay, so why social media? Well, social media is where people are hanging out. I thought this was pretty incredible, an average of two hours a day on social media. I bet it's even more for some people. And if you really think about it, people are <clears throat> checking in on their social media, usually in the in-between moments themselves. It's when they're waiting in line for their coffee, they're using the bathroom, they're at a doctor's appointment in the waiting room and they are checking out Instagram. They're checking out Facebook. So they're there. So it is a good place to go and find people because that's where people are at. 
I think it's also interesting, this statistics, that 86% of women actually use social media for purchasing advice. And put it in the chat if you have ever gone to Pinterest or asked people on social media for a recommendation. We've all done it, right? I was looking for like the perfect vacuum to pick up my kids' messes. And what did I do? I posted about it on Facebook. I got recommendations. I bought the vacuum that people said, and it works great. So especially women, they're already social creatures and they're already going to social media to look for advice on something that they need or something they want to purchase. Now, here is an interesting statistics about direct selling in general. So that's network marketing, what we're in. First of all, 86 or 89 percent of direct sellers are using social media, or I'm sorry, 89% of Americans are using social media and 46% of them would welcome contact from a direct seller, that's you, regarding business opportunities on social media. So we're not even talking right now about business opportunities, we're just talking about products. We're just gonna be talking about sharing your product story and to think that 46% of people are super open to that. I think that's important to note. And then this is really something that we wanna sink in. We are salespeople, right? Even if we don't think of ourselves as salespeople, we are, we're selling a product. And as a salesperson, we must be visible. We must put ourselves out there so that the buyers, when they're looking around for answers, can find us. So just give yourself a little check-in, a little internal um, thermometer. Are you putting yourself out there? Does your network know what you sell? Do they know what you're up to? Do they know what you're doing? And then are you putting yourself out there to new people? Are you expanding your network? Okay, I be honest, tell me how many of you feel a little shy showing up on social media or putting yourself out on social media. I see a few hands up. I know you do because I do. Almost every time I make a post, I still have that little flutter of like, I kind of feel shy. I don't know if people are gonna like, like this or resonate with this. So these are just a few thoughts for us all to kind of take in and try to work with that fear. One, you are creating a personal brand. This is you for the world to see. So the only thing you have to be is authentically you. You are amazing and you are worth being seen by the world. You don't have to put on a mask. You don't have to put on a certain look. You don't have to say the right thing. You can't say the wrong thing to the right person. You just have to show up as you. It is normal to feel shy putting yourself out there. So normalize that for yourself. I bet almost everyone listening to this webinar feels a little shy putting yourself out there. Every time I post, what I do to work through that shyness is I think about who I might be helping. Who could I possibly be helping? I just had a meeting with a potential customer the other day and when I told her about the MetaPower products, I could see hope come in her eyes. She's working with blood sugar issues. And when she realized that there was something that might help, it was that hope that keeps me going and keeps me posting. It's the countless stories, the gratitude, the lives change that inspires me to show up. Even though I'm scared, even with messy hair, even with no makeup, even if I don't know perfectly what to say, I just show up as me every day. And this is my invitation to you. Besides, the only ones watching are the ones that want to be close to you. So just make sure you give them what they are here for. A hundred percent you. Okay, that is my inspirational speech to help us get over the shyness. I know there's a lot more work to do there, but let's get into the nuts and bolts of what I've been doing, what kind of system and process I've been using to create these enrollments from MetaPower. 
So I'm using something called the ATM method. It's the add tag message concept. And what that is, is you have someone who's interested, right? Someone who wants to learn about your products and you tell them that you have a learning group and you add them to the group. On our team, the Visionary Leaders team, we have a group called Wellness Simplified. So once you add them to the group, you tag them to the featured video at the top of the page. It's an 11 minute video and that teaches them all about MetaPower. Then you message them and you say, I added you to the group. I tagged you in a video, watch the video and then let's chat. It is that simple as the ad tag message. So all I've been doing is posting on social media, all the things I'm gonna teach you in this challenge, and then when people show interest, I add them to the group, I tag them in a video, and I message them. I'm just gonna pause for a second to see if there's any questions about the ad tag message. Okay. So this is what Wellness Simplified looks like. I've put a QR code in case you just have, you're not in the group yet. It is only for the Visionary Leaders team. So if you're a guest on this webinar, you'll want to go to your upline to find out what their ad tag message group is. So it's called Wellness Simplified. We have these featured posts. The start here is the video that you would tag people in. And then every day there's going to be testimonies put in the group, a little bit of education. And what's so great about this is the person wants to be in the group from the beginning. They watch the video and usually the video is what already sells them on the product. They want the product. But if the video doesn't or they don't watch the video, they get dripped on. They get something every day kind of giving them more and more info. And eventually people will often reach out to you and say that they, they want to get the product or something like that. And then what's also awesome about the group is they can add their friends. And so it's a complete system. We actually have another video that's called, I have my meta power now what? And a final video that's called, who do you know that needs meta power? So it's a complete factory of duplication and sharing and a complete system. Okay, Susan, you want to use your personal Facebook page. This is about you, really you. And you, if you're not on the Visionary Leaders team, you would want to go to your upline to see if they have an ad tag message group. And if they don't, then yes, you could create your own using the sizzle method. But maybe you and I can talk about this privately to figure it out for you. Are you not on the Visionary Leaders team? Let us know. But if you're on the Visionary Leaders team, please use our group. Do not go create another group. It is more powerful when you have a group with a bunch of people in it. Okay, so this is the basics of how I've been doing things. I show up daily on social media. So I post on my wall every day. I'm not posting about Meta Power on my wall every day. And I'm sharing my life and my stories. We'll get into this more, but your stories are more like the reality TV of your life. I network and I request. I network and I connect. So I'm friend requesting people that I know in real life. So I make sure that they're all my friends on Facebook and I'm finding new friends every day. I'm going into Facebook groups. I'm looking around for new people to connect with and I'm sending friend requests every day for new people. Then I'm using the ATM Facebook group, the Wellness Simplified. So when someone wants to learn about MetaPower, I add them to the Facebook group. And we're going to get more into the nitty gritty of this. This is your daily method of operation. And this is really what this challenge is about. It's about getting in the habit of doing these things every day <clears throat> and starting to do them well. The first thing you're going to do every day is post on your wall. We'll get into what you post on your wall, but every day you want to make sure you post on your personal Facebook wall. Throughout the day, you're going to post in your stories. Every day, you're going to add two new friends on Facebook. And then once a week, I like to pick the day that I do it, but it doesn't really matter what day. Once a week, you're going to post your actual product testimony on your wall with a CTA, 
So that's a call to action. And the call to action would be join my learning group to learn more, or it would be drop a comment. You could say something like drop the comment, the word meta power in my comments, and I will send you a message and we can talk about it. So this is a good one to screenshot because this is the daily to-do list that you're working towards bringing in as a habit. Andrea says, I've hang up on friending people I don't actually know. I hate random people that friend me, then try to sell me something. Plus, I like posting about my kids for friends and family and don't always feel comfortable about doing that with a bunch of random people. Advice. Yes, Andrea. And this is a common concern that comes up. There's a couple of workarounds here and a couple of <clears throat> mindset things that I would invite you to work through. First, you could still post about your kids and your friends. You can actually change the setting on your post so that you pick who it goes to. Um, your other option is to create a Facebook profile that is just for recruiting and all of that stuff, but that'll get confusing because you actually want your friends to see what you're posting on social media. What I would encourage you to do is work through that hang up. I certainly understand the hang up myself. And what you have to really talk yourself through is you are not adding random people and selling to them. You are adding people to become friends with them. After you've become friends with them, you are going to share your story on your wall once a week. It's just once a week. And it's going to be your story. I'm going to teach you how to do it. So it's not in a salesy way. And they get to opt in. They get to say, I'm interested. And if they're not interested, they just bypass that post. They just don't look at that post. And if they don't comment or engage in that post, Facebook logarithm will actually make it so that they barely see it. Um, but I understand it's a hang up. And it's something that if you want to use social media to sell your products, like in this way that we have to work through, because this is about making new friends. It's about being friendly. Now you don't have to post about your kids and all of that. So um, it's a challenge and I definitely will talk to you about it in more detail. I think I might need to ask you more questions and help you work through it. But what I've come to is sharing these products is too important to me. So I'm going to share them anyways, even though I get a little worried about, I don't know, what people would think about me. I'm going to do it anyways. But your, your, pro, your problem there of like not wanting to share your kids and your family with these other people that you're networking with. I think the only solution you're going to have there is to actually have two profiles, which could completely be um, what you need to do. But maybe let's talk about it more in detail or put more things in the chat and we'll get into it more in the webinar. Susan, are you posting the DMO on your personal Facebook page, not the group? I'm not sure I understand that. So I'm saying you need to post on your personal Facebook page once a day, sharing your story. The DMO for this challenge is in our social selling challenge Facebook group, which you're, you are in. So this is about you posting on your personal wall so that your friends, your family, and all your new friends are going to see what you're up to. You're not posting. We're going to get into this. You're not posting about meta power every day. No way. You're only posting about your product once a week. Your posts every day are going to be other things, and I can help you see that. Well, there, there it is, right? <laughs> Do you ever feel like you don't know what to post? So we're talking about posting on your wall every day. And I 100% do not want you posting about your product every day. What you're going to be posting about is things that you are interested in, who you're about, your special interests, subjects that you would share 
with a like-minded friend that you haven't met yet. Something that either entertains, something that educates, something that inspires, or something that in engages. I'm going to give you some examples. So um, one of my favorite things to post, especially when I don't know what to post, is a funny meme. So I would ask you all to think about who are you? And who do you want who do you want to connect with? So I'm a mom. I'm passionate about wellness and I'm passionate about leadership and entrepreneurship. So I love connecting with other moms who are also passionate about wellness, passionate about entrepreneurship, passionate about leadership. So that's who I'm looking for. When I'm friend requesting, I'm friend requesting people like that. I'm in mom groups. I'm in business groups. I'm in networking groups. So at least once a week, I post a funny meme and you can find memes by going on Google. You can just go mom meme or mo dog mom meme or um, gardener meme and just find a funny meme that kind of represents you and your personality and the people you want to connect with. They would find it funny. And that's a great post. Another good post is uh asking a question or looking for a recommendation. Like, do you want to find a new yoga class? Or maybe you're looking for a new chiropractor, or maybe you're traveling to Chicago for the first time and you want the best restaurant. So that's a great post to make. Uh, selfies are really good. Facebook really likes selfies. So whenever you can post a selfie, it doesn't even have to make sense what it goes with, but I like to do a selfie with a life lesson, you know, or maybe my daughter said something really funny. So I might just post funny things that Emma or Olivia says. Another prompt is to do market research. So if you know that you are marketing to moms or maybe you're marketing to women over 50 or maybe you're marketing to business owners or you're marketing to dog owners, you can do market research. So my example for moms, would the post would say, calling all moms, what would you rather have? Endless energy or a full night's sleep? And then people are going to comment. And as people comment, all those comments tell me those are my potential customers. Those are my potential friends, my prospects. Those are people that I'm going to go engage with. I've got eight prompts for you total. So you could just do one of my prompts every day and you'd have something to post for seven days. So another posting prompt is to give some advice to your target audience. So say your target audience is bakers. Give somebody your like secret tip for having the best chocolate chip cookies and post a selfie of yourself eating a chocolate chip cookie. Share a photo from a special day. Maybe you had your anniversary or you a birthday or you took your kids to the pumpkin patch or you took your dogs to a dog parade. If you do something cool and special, take some photos and share that. I love this one. Share an unpopular opinion that might actually be popular among your target audience. Does anybody have an idea for what this could be for your target audience? So say your target audience is chefs. So what would be an unpopular opinion that may actually be popular among your target audience? So, you know, as a mom, um, I don't know. It might be something like this would be really controversial, but I could talk about what I think about vaccines or what I think about potty training or what I think about sleepovers. Like I could say, you know what? I actually don't believe that sleepovers are, are a good thing. And here's why. So people who aren't parents might not get that, or they might think that I'm way off and it'll start a conversation. Recommend something. Like if you went to a good restaurant or you found a cool playlist or a good podcast, or you have a recipe, something of value for your target audience. Okay. I'm going to check the chat to see if you guys have some good ideas. Retirement age people talk about Medicare, right? So those can be really good for getting um, everything going. And Andrea, in our bonus training with Emmy Cornwall, she's going to talk all about Instagram. So you will be able to do Instagram and you're right, it's different. Instagram is not quite like Facebook. Facebook is really a place 
that works if you like being social and you like making new friends and you like engaging with your friends. I mean, maybe what you do for a while, Andrea, is you don't worry about adding people that you don't really know and you just work with your existing friends and family and just try to get comfortable sharing your story with them. Um, but I add everyone. I just add everyone as many friends as possible. I'm going to hit the limit of 5,000 soon and I'll have to go through and clean things up. I also kind of don't, I, I don't want to share my kids as much on social media because I'm not as comfortable with what's happening with um, children's photos and stuff. So I'm not as like into social media for keeping my family updated on my kids. I don't know. We can talk about it more. Okay, so here's some prompts for your stories. So what do I put in my stories? This is your reality TV. Really anything goes here. The most mundane stuff, silly stuff that you wouldn't even imagine people would like to see, they might, they probably want to see. If they're only going to your stories, if they already kind of like you and want to engage with you. So they're not really looking in your stories if they don't want to know what's up with you. So this is really the place where you show them, this is what happens in my day-to-day -day life. So here's some ideas for you. Unboxing video of your meta power, like actually show them when your meta power comes, you open it, what you do with everything, show them spaces in your home. Like you could say, okay, well, I'm going to show you my home office, or I'm going to show you my favorite place to have a cup of tea, or this is where, this is where I work out. If you go on a road trip, document the road trip, put that in your stories. Definitely show yourself using your meta power, like mixing your meta power in the morning, do a video of that, do a selfie of you drinking your meta power, using your oils. Those are great things. Maybe a photo of your morning routine. Do you pray or meditate first thing? Do you go to the gym first thing? Put that in your stories. Ask a question. Do you like this or that? Maybe you're trying to decide what to have for dinner. Or maybe you're picking out tile for your bathroom remodel. Or maybe you found two outfits and you're deciding which one to buy. Put that in your story. That actually asks them to engage with you. And then definitely meta power testimonies and product lifestyle. You can actually sell in your stories every day. So the way I look at it is my stories are my reality TV show with commercials. And commercials are going to be like a before and after meta power picture or something about like a special going on. And then you always want to have a call to action in those stories where you're selling, like a link to purchase or a reply to the DM and we'll talk about it, something like that. If you need testimonies, I've put them in a Google Drive for you. These are great testimonies to share in your stories. So at least once a day, throw a meta power testimony in there and you can grab that with the QR code. I will also put a link to it in the comments. There we go. But that's really what I try to remember with my stories is it's the reality TV show and people love reality TV shows. They want to see your dogs. They want to see your house. They want to see your car. They want to see the cool things that you're up to. Okay. And then once a week, you share your meta story on your personal wall. And I'm going to give you some examples. So I started taking MetaPower September 15th. And what I've been doing is I've just been updating people once a week on my personal wall about how MetaPower is going for me. So back on October 2nd, I did a whole post about what I've been experiencing, what's happened. Like I've lost 12 pounds. I have a lot of energy. My chronic foot pain is gone. And I did before and after pictures of myself. You don't have to, I know before and after pictures can totally be scary. Believe me, when I made this post, it was so scary. I didn't want to do it, but I decided to, 
I decided it was important enough to me to post my picture. You do not have to, but remember pictures speak a thousand words. It's really powerful for people to see the transformation. And I tell you the day I posted my before and after picture in my bikini, I got so many people wanting to join the wellness simplified group. It is really important to put a call to action in here. And I'll talk about that in a moment. Another one that I did was an update just a couple of days ago. And it was like, look, my pants are really big. I have to go um, buy some new clothes, some new shopping. So that's some examples of what your meta power post could be. You definitely want to always have a call to action on this post. So here's an example. If you want to learn about this metabolic reset, drop a heart in the comments. Then you have to go back to all those comments and make sure that you send them a message, invite them to the Wellness Simplified group, tag them in the video and follow up with them. Another call to action could be comment with the word meta and I'll DM you my protocol. So these are some things that are really important to remember when you're making your posts and you're helping people on social media. People are busy and our attention spans are only an average of eight seconds long when scrolling. Whoa. So that also means you want to stop the scroll. If you don't include a picture that's compelling or interesting or grabs their attention, they're going to scroll right past your post unless they really like you and they really want to know what you have to say and you have some good history of having interesting, entertaining posts, for the most part, you have to stop the scroll with a compelling photo. And this is why you wanna figure out a way to share some kind of photo that grabs their attention. Also make it easy for someone to move forward with you. That's why I recommend saying something like, drop a heart emoji in the comments and I'll reach out to you. That's easy. That's something someone can do Remember that they're probably using their phone while they're sitting on the toilet or they're in line at the coffee shop or they're waiting to pick up their kids. So you want that action to be simple, like one click for them. Yes, Claudine, you definitely send them a private message asking permission first. And then you want to tell them exactly what to do next. So if they drop a heart, comment and you reach out to them and say, I'd love to share my um, experience with you. I have a learning group. Can I add you to the Facebook group? Once they say yes, you want to tell them exactly what to do next. So watch the video and I'll follow up with you in a few days or watch the video and then send me a message and tell me what you think. People really need us to help guide them along. Any other questions so far? We're going to move on to finding Facebook friends. Okay, how do I find people to add on Facebook? So yes, the first hurdle to get over is definitely being comfortable making friends with strangers because that's that's what this really is. And um, I know it can seem weird, but I've had such great experience with this. I actually have a, a new friend who I met on Facebook. She lives in my town. She also has kids. We've become really fast friends through a random me adding her on Facebook. Um, I've, I've made business connections. I've, uh, I've done business with other people. I mean, so many things. And sure, there's people who, don't request, don't uh, approve my request, or there's people I don't connect with, or they don't resonate with me, or we defriend each other. But I guess it's been a habit for me for so long, friend requesting people, that it really just doesn't bother me whether they say yes or no, or what happens. So let me share with you how I go about finding them. So the habit, the DMO, is to add two people a day. Let's go for the low hanging fruit, right? You probably already have in real life friends that you're not friends with on Facebook, but anytime you meet someone new, find them on Facebook. If I am out at a yoga class or the gym or picking up my kids and I meet someone new, I try to find them on Facebook and I friend request them. Network. 
be social. This happens online and in life. So you can go to interesting events and meet new people. You can go to actual networking events. If you come home from a networking event, go find all those people on Facebook and then join special interest groups. So if you like gardening, join a gardening group on Facebook, then go into the gardening group and start looking at the different threads, look through the comments on the threads. And when somebody says something that you resonate with that friend request them, and you just send them a message that says something like, Hey, I loved your comment on that post about beetle pests and your like all natural fix. Can you send me the recipe? You really are just making friends. It's nothing more than that. You are not going to sell to every single person that you friend request. You are making friends. And once a week, you're going to have a sales post on your personal page, but it's a very low pressure sales post. It's really just a story and they have to come to you. They're going to come to you if they want to know more. So you're not selling to them unless they come to you wanting to be sold to. So these people that you're friend requesting, you're just expanding your network, expanding your social sphere. You're not necessarily selling to them. That's great. Claudine likes volunteering. So make sure you friend request everyone you volunteer with. Susan Paul likes um, LinkedIn and neighborhood next door groups. Yes, absolutely. That's great. So the key is Facebook friend request everyone you meet in all those other areas so that you have people watching your Facebook feed because that's where you'll be um, putting your energy. And that's where the ad tag message group is. So then it's really just a matter of rinse, repeat, and watch the magic happen. I want to show you a couple of examples of what has happened for me as I've been doing this. Remember, it's post on your wall once a day. It doesn't, it's not about a product, right? It's just about you and you're educating, you're entertaining, you're having fun. Post in your stories, add two friends every day to Facebook. And once a week you do that actual sales post, but it's more like a testimony for the product with a call to action. Okay. Then what this is all held together by is the act of nourishing your network and nourishing your network can happen every day throughout the day, anytime. It's not a one-way street. If you want engagement, if you want people to see your posts and comment on your posts and join Wellness Simplified, you have to engage. So you actually have to be social on Facebook. Go and comment on your friends' posts, watch their stories, like their posts, engage with them, get to know them on social. Now you might be wondering, how do I track all these people? You're going to have all these prospects, right? You're going to have people that you're adding, people you're putting in the group, people that are commenting. Well, Amanda Pitt, the creator of this method, made a Trello board that is absolutely awesome. You can go here and just copy this Trello board and it allows you to track all of your different lists. So if you are a person who likes tracking and contact management, this could be great for you. We also have a playbook, the ATM playbook, and um, that can be really good for script ideas and kind of to go over a lot what we've talked about today. You can grab it here with the QR code or use the Google Drive. I'll give you a few minutes to grab that. Okay, so this is some examples of messages that I've had with people. So this is someone who said they wanted to be added to my Facebook group. They commented on a post and they wanted to come into the learning group. So I sent them a message that said, I invited you to this Facebook group. I post stories and education in there about metabolic health. And there's a video at the top that will explain the system to you. I'd love to know your thoughts and you can ask any questions. Just let me know. She said, All's good here. You look great. I'll sit down tonight and watch the video. I know I need something. Thanks again. And I go, okay. <laughs> and she says, um, had a few minutes, saw the video. I think I can benefit from this. My joints hurt after exercising. I don't sleep and I can stand to lose a few pounds. Let me know what's needed to put in an order. So then I made a link for her with the MetaPower kit and I sent it to her. 
A few hours later, I had an enrollment notification in my email. It's that easy. Here's another example. My friend, I don't see the video. Oh, by the way, the way I met this person is through a networking group, a business networking group. So she goes, I don't see the video. Maybe I'm looking in the wrong place. So I sent her a screenshot and I said, I tagged you here. And she goes, got it. I know it's the weekend. I'm out working in my trailer, but I want in. And I was like, I was laughing at her. And so I sent her the link. A few hours later, I had an enrollment notification. These are people coming to me. Like I'm not pitching them. They're just watching my stories and they see my posts and they want to know about MetaPower. Here's one where I have to follow up with her. So, hi, I saw the request to join my Facebook group. I'm going to tag you in the 11 minute video. She goes, sounds great. You know, 24 hours later, I'm like, did you check out the video? She's like, no, I haven't had a chance. It's my birthday weekend. I said, no worries. I'll check in with you next week. Perfect. And so I'm going to check in with her in a few days. So I just wanted you all to see that this is simple and you're not selling. You're really not selling. Does any of this feel like I sold? I posted a picture on my wall <coughs> of my feet <laughs> and said, since taking this metabolic system, I can put on cute shoes again. And then in my stories, I'm posting before and after pictures and people are coming to me. They're coming to me to join the group. They're coming to me to get the link. It's fun and it's easy. So are you ready to start the challenge? Hopefully this webinar has given you some of the framework, some of the ideas, helped you with some of the mindset blocks. Here's what the challenge is actually going to be. So tonight, I want you to go to your Facebook um, page in your bio. I just want you to optimize some things here. You want to make sure that your profile picture is you. That's supposed to say smiling, not miling. It's um, you smiling, facing forward, looking at the camera. People really need to like see you and get a sense of you. When they see your face, they connect with you. Your ban banner photo should show your personal brand. So my personal brand is all about motherhood, leadership, and wellness. So I picked a nice picture of my family. You get to decide what your lifestyle is. If you are a chef and you're going to really be talking about food, your banner photo might be food. If you're going to be talking about pets, your banner photo might be pets. If you're going to be um, really talking about, I don't know, working out, maybe it's you working out. I hope that makes sense. Put in the chat, what you think your banner photo should be based on what your personal brand is, what your special interests are, you know, who you are, who you really want to connect with. I'd love to know. Now, this may be contradictory to something else that you've learned or you've thought or what you have, but I don't think doTERRA should be anywhere in your bio. Don't put your doTERRA website. Don't say that you're a doTERRA wellness advocate. And the reason is when your friend requesting random people one of the first things they're going to be thinking is, what are they trying to sell me? And you don't want them to come to your profile and immediately be turned off and be like, oh, I've heard about doTERRA or, oh, that's one of those MLM things that is going to push people away. You want your bio to just look like you're a cool person up to cool things. And there's no specific brand that you're connected to. Of course, if they dug a little bit, they'd find out. If they looked at my profile, they'd find out. And it's not like we're completely hiding it from him. I'm just not going to put a big banner out that says, I'm a doTERRA wellness advocate or I'm a MLM rep. I want it to be more approachable and I don't want that to turn them off. Your links, you don't really need any links, but please don't put your doTERRA website because again, it'll do the same thing. I have a website, you don't need one. And I have made a link tree where I have some different opt-ins, uh, my podcast, things like that, but you really don't need any links. I see questions or chat about this. So I'll come in here. Mandy, would you say essential oil specialist or something non-name based? You could, Mandy, if that's what you really want people to know about you. With you and what I know about you, I would probably put your... Um, your real world, real world, I would probably put your actual credentials because it's amazing how 
who you work with and what you do. And it's not just about essential oils. At this point, essential oils are a bit of a trigger word. They're a buzzword. I feel like people would make up something about that. Like they think they would know what that is. So if I were you, I would actually put, I can't remember your exact title, but it would be more the work that you do with kids. If you have a job, I would put your actual job as what you do. Or if your special interests, like let's just talk for a moment about special interests. I'm going to stop the share. The presentation is almost over. We'll come right back to it. But I just want to talk for a minute about special interests and help you all figure out what this is for you. So some may call it a niche. I don't like to call it a niche because I feel like people get freaked out about that. Like, oh, I, I can't niche because you're trying to like fit it into one thing. I like to call it special interest. So the question is, first of all, who are you? Throw a couple things in the chat. Who are you? Are you a mom? Are you a grandma? Are you a dad? Are you a husband? Are you a dog mom? Are you a business owner? Just what comes to mind? First thing that comes to mind, put it in the chat. Who are you? I'm just waiting just to get some. Mandy, mom, occupational therapist. Inga, mom, grandma, retired and you love being retired. Okay, what else? I, I'm going to tell you what I see on here. I see a naturopathic physician. I see a grandma. I see, I see lots of moms. Ooh, dog mom, knitter, animal lover, traveler, crafter, gardener, quilting, Susan Paul, aromatherapy, stay-at-home mom who loves fitness, mom, gardener, herbalist. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, you guys are starting to get it. So for me again, I'm a mom. I'm obsessed with wellness. I'm obsessed with leadership and entrepreneurship. Those are my special interests. I could add more where I'm a domestic violence advocate. I'm an anti-human trafficking advocate. I am a CrossFitter. I'm a yogi. Like you can get, you can go on and on and on, but pick the three or four that exemplify not only who you are, but who you want to attract. So you might be a poker player, but maybe that's not who you want to attract to work with. You might be a grandma, but you don't exactly want to attract other grandmas. It's really up to you. It's, it's mostly who are you? What do you love to talk about? What can you teach the world? What do you have special skills in? And then do you want to attract people that are either similar or trying to be more like that? So that's, that's more what you'd want to put in your bio rather than doTERRA wellness advocate or essential oil educator. If you really are an aromatherapist, sure, put that, put that in the, your bio. But I would probably lean more towards either your actual job, your specialty, or your special, your, your special interest. So I'm going to go back here to jump in with this. Oh, where did my stuff go? And definitely, if you had an aha about your special interest, please put it in the chat and immediately go find a Facebook group for that special interest. Okay, so you see, like I haven't actually put Look what I put. I put foodie. I love food. Wellness obsessed mom and business owner. Okay. So it doesn't say anything about essential oils. It doesn't say anything about what I do for work. I'm just trying to be a real person. I'm on Facebook to make friends, to be social. And yes, I am going to share my love of a product with people once a week and in my stories. But what I'm really here for is to make friends and be social and network. So that's what I want to put forward is like me, the whole person that you might want to be a friend with. Any ahas about 
your special interest or who you are, I'd love to see it in the chat. Right, Susan goes, good point on the bio, not mentioning doTERRA. I look for that when I accept friends and won't accept if I think they're trying to sell me something, right? You do look for that. And we have to remember, we're not trying to sell anyone anything. I really want you to reframe this. I am not, you are not trying to sell anyone anything. You are trying to make friends and you're trying to network. And yes, you are going to share once a week a story about a product you really love and you're going to share that product in your stories and you do get paid for it, but you'll probably share other products that you don't actually get paid for too. The meta sells itself. It really does. And the people are going to come to you. You're not going after them. They're going to come to you. They're going to like, they, first of all, they have to like you. They have to know you. They have to trust you. And that's going to happen through what you're posting every day and what you're sharing. And then when that all happens and they feel like maybe they could benefit from that product you've been loving, they'll reach out to you and say, I want to learn more. Okay. So once again, this is your seven day challenge. Post on your wall every day, post in your stories throughout the day, add two new friends a day on Facebook and post a testimony of the product on your wall once a week with a call to action. Rebecca, I would expand to natural foodie and interest in wellness. I enjoy nourishing, nurturing my body with natural foods and enjoy the taste of true food. That's awesome, Rebecca. You have such a good focus. So now you can go join Facebook groups that are about nutrition and food and natural wellness. And you can talk about that on your, your walls and you can attract more people that are into that. And you're going to make some good friends. And guess what? A lot of them aren't going to buy from you and that's okay. Okay. I have a special gift for you. This is my friend, Emmy Cornwell. She has been wildly successful in the social selling sphere. Um, and she teaches people how to create a personal brand. She is going to focus a bit more on Instagram because I've been focusing heavily on Facebook, but all of us are going to gain so much from her. So this webinar is November 9th at the end of the challenge at 5 p.m. You can grab the QR code and it'll take you to the Facebook event where I have the Zoom link and everything. And I'm really excited for this webinar with Emmy. Let everybody grab that. Okay, going on. So just one more reminder, if you want those text alerts over the next seven days, you can text VLBiz, all one word, to 833-359-0069. And then this is my final slide and I'll come take more questions. If it's not fun, you aren't doing it right. Okay. I want everybody to really get that. This is about making friends and being social and having fun. And of course, sharing your experience with MetaPower. Some people are going to want to learn more. Most people aren't, but you might make some really amazing friends along the way. Okay, everybody, I want to hear feedback. I want to hear questions. I want to hear concerns. Let's work through some of this. I can hang out for a little bit. Do you think you can do this? Yes, yes, I see Mandy going. Oh, yes, and wheels are turning, good. How do you create QR codes? I do it straight in Canva. There's a little option in Canva to do it. Claudine, you're welcome. Anybody else want to work through any blocks with this that you're willing to talk about? I, I'm ready. I'm yeah. willing to talk about it. So I have a concern about just asking anybody to be a friend. Okay. Um, Tell us. And by myself, you know, I'm just being extra cautious. So that I can see that as a block. Um, it's just my own personal feeling. Um, yeah. And so my, you're you're concerned about like becoming Facebook friends well, with someone you don't really know. Yes, and there's a lot of trollers out there. I do get a lot of friend requests, and it's a lot of trollers that look like I'm just not comfortable. 
Yes, yeah, so I only want you to friend request people that you actually want to be friends with. Mm -hmm. So you you totally have to go look at their profile, find out where they live, who they are. So this is not just friend requesting anyone with a pulse. Okay. Okay. This is the same thing that would happen if you were at a coffee shop uh -huh. and you overheard somebody say, I love chai tea. And you went, Hey, I like chai tea too. And they said, Oh, really? What's your favorite brand? And you said, Oh, it's this one I'm drinking right here. Uh -huh. And then you start chatting. And then maybe you see them at the coffee shop again next week. Yeah. And I'd be comfortable with that. I'd be comfortable with that kind that's of That's the same thing that's happening. You can happen okay. on Facebook. That's okay. what I'm saying is yeah. I know that the internet can come with all these extra things that you have to worry about, like trolls or people who are trying to um, scam you. But what I am really talking about is real live people. I'm talking about someone that you have a real connection with. Okay. Someone that you look at their profile and you see their pictures and what they were saying in your gardening group, you really resonated with. And there's someone that like, yeah, you really do want to build a, a friendship with. Okay. That's, okay. and that's why it's only two a day. That's, too. that's better. Yeah. Definitely so don't say is, yes uh, to those crazy no, I won't. From, right, right. Yeah. And you talk about the, the face profile thing. Um, I have chosen to always have my husband in the picture with me for my face profile, just because I feel safer that way, too. Sure. Yeah, that's yeah. totally fine. But um, my next question is, you talked about in the stories, doing several stories throughout the day. You know, like I know the stories last for 24 hours. So you're talking about, you know, spat, you know, kind of so many different ones during the day. And it doesn't have to always be about MetaPower or oils, but it could be, you want to interject some life stuff, right? Yep. You want it to be your reality TV. So your actual reality with a few commercials sprinkled in. So okay, an example would be take a picture of your morning tea mm -hmm. and then take a picture of your, your like going outside to garden and then share a picture of yourself drinking your meta power with something that says like, I love, I love what's happening to my metabolic health. If you want to learn more, send me a message. Yeah. And then your next three would be what you had for dinner, <laughs> maybe uh -huh. inspirational quote. Okay. Thank yeah. you. That's, that's helpful. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that up. Absolutely important to stay safe. And there are ways that you can make sure, you know, that it's not creepos. <laughs> okay. What else, what else is coming up? Oh, Virginia says, Florence, I love your Facebook. It already feels like reality TV. <laughs> And I do, I do Facebook uh, post every single day. I've done that for quite a long time. Oh, good. It's part of, it's part of my creative juices. And then I intermix a little bit of, you know, doTERRA into it. I don't want it to be at all doTERRA. I want it just kind of casually bringing in. And um, I think people are more and more getting used to me bringing it in. So they are looking at it more rather than like passing it up, which is because I can tell by, you know, by the, what the activity that's been going on. So that's good. Then, then you're, yeah. you're prime for this. So the key for you yeah. would be to once a week actually have a call to action. Yeah. An actual thing that says, drop a comment and I'll add you to my learning group. I've or, done that. Yeah, quite a bit. I do do that. I do say. DM me, or I have put my personal uh, doTERRA website on photos before. 
small. Wow. Yeah. Oh, you're doing it, Florence. You're doing it. Got to get some of those new people. Yeah, that's the thing is if we've been doing it and it's to the same people and they're not, you know, necessarily moving forward, that's why it can be helpful to have new people in there. I really like the idea of the call to action. And I think that's really important when we're learning all this stuff is we do need to have that call to action so we can implement what we're learning. Mm -hmm. And I have learning is my number one strength. And it's taken me a couple of years to recognize that I can learn all over the place, but if I'm not doing anything with it, it's really not serving a purpose. So I'm grateful that I learned that. Cool. Time. And you have me Thank in you. here as a achiever. So everything I like to do is call to action. It's all oh, help you. <laughs> well, my number five is achiever. So I'm going for it, girl. Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. Anyone else have a... I don't know, just something that's like coming up or is going to stop you from going forward and doing this. Kirsten, please. Okay. I'm a little scary. Hopefully my kids let me get through. I just, I want to kind of share something that I'm, I was able to move through with this fear of putting kiddos on social media and even myself. Um, and it may not be your thing. It may not be what resonates for you. But at first I was like, super involved in learning about the trafficking and what they do with the kids and all that stuff. But I would, I still don't throw my kids online very often and I still try to keep them out of the limelight. Um, but I definitely have now done something a little different instead of creating fear around it. I just trust that if they do pop their little cute faces online, that they're protected. And I say a little quick prayer and I do the same thing for myself now because it's totally worth it to see your face and to show face. And, um, I, you know, like I'm not always cute in the morning. I don't want to, you know, like sometimes I'm like, I have to have all this makeup on my hair. Fabulous to be on. Yes. Don't get me wrong. Right. You want to look decent sometimes, especially when you do a real, it's going to be out in the blasted universe, but you do not have to be on point all the time. People are going to love you for being authentic and scraggly because everyone else is scraggly too. <laughs> like, just be a scrag. <laughs> yeah. Trust it. <laughs> right just trust it and just remember I feel like remember that when we start getting scared of something or or nervous about something that we need to just look at it a little harder and write down what it is and then maybe even lean into it and once we lean into it we realize it's not that scary and there's not really anything to be worried about so I just want to invite anyone who has anything coming up to look at it a little harder and to trust it and then remember we're really powerful so send your blessing of protection around it and and move through it in a space that feels right for you. All right, Thank, you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, what I started doing with my kids is not showing their face. So, you know, the, the two concerns with kids is some really gross stuff that can happen with their pictures or like um, just a, like kind of what Florence is saying, not wanting somebody to know too much about like the habits of your day. So I've been trying not to show my kids' faces um, and that's feeling good to me. And, um, but I totally show my face <laughs> because that's what helps people get to know you is your face. And yeah, you don't have to look perfect at all. It's so good when you just show up for real, because then people feel like they can show up real, but I know this is a process and we have to work through things. So use your brave roller and your balance blend oil up before you, you share. And I love that Kirsten brought in, um, just that intention and that prayer, because that's part of what I do too, is my post is going to find the people who need it. And when we just remember that, you know, this is just about helping people get what they need to get the healing that they need. And it's just one way to share. There's lots of other ways to do it. And we're going to learn about Instagram next time. A oh, one tip there, someone was saying, can you link your IG stories to Facebook? You can, and that's great. I like to share my stories to Facebook and IG. But um, if you post on Instagram and then just let it post to your Facebook wall, it doesn't get as good of engagement. So I would recommend not doing that, like actually post on your Facebook 
IG is Instagram. It's kind of next level. We'll learn about Instagram on the ninth. For now, just focus on Facebook and kind of get more comfortable with that. So you are gonna get off this webinar, optimize your bio. And if you opted in for the text alerts, you'll get a text at 8 a.m. Otherwise, at 6 a.m., the post of the day will go live in the Facebook group. So you can go either place. And I did make little videos for you too. Um, thanks everyone. I'm excited to see how this challenge goes and I'm totally available for you for questions and concerns. And um, I can't wait to see what you put out there. So thanks for spending your evening with me and I'll see you next time.